Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Eat Pancho back at you again with another video. And so for this next one, we've got to head up north to Penshaw, which for you guys who don't know where that is, is close by to Sunderland and Washington. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for at least the past few weeks, and you've been keeping up to date with my videos, then you'll know that recently we covered two stories. One was the story of a man who beat another man to death and took a trophy picture for Facebook. And the other one was two drug dealers that stabbed a man to death, fist bumped and took a celebration picture for Instagram. Well, this next story we're about to get into is all too familiar with these stories we've previously taken a look at. At around 1am on the 16th of May 2020, 55 year old Sean Mason went to go and buy drugs from dealers Wayne Froud and Stephen Milroy. But when he turned up to the address on Avondale Avenue, the pair had alleged that Sean had previously stolen items off them, with Stephen Milroy in his own words telling his sister his Xbox, money and green or cannabis had been stolen previously. Again, this isn't a fact and was just alleged by Stephen Milroy. When Sean had turned up to the address on that day though, with this thought in their heads that he had robbed the pair, they would carry out a vicious attack and would end up leaving him for dead outside in the communal area of the flat. Sean's son knew that his father had gone to buy drugs off the pair and became concerned at how long he had been at the flats and so went to go and check up on him. When he arrived, he found his father's lifeless body there. This was around 3am according to initial reports, although in court, it isn't clear what exact time Sean's son had turned up there. Panicked at this point, he was trying to get help and he managed to stop a police car that happened to be travelling nearby. Attempts were made to save his life and he was rushed to hospital, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, he would later go on to be pronounced dead. A short while later, both Stephen and Wayne would go on to be charged in connection with Sean's murder, and after denying the charges brought against them, a trial was to go ahead at the end of November. Prosecutor Camomelli QC told the court what I've just basically explained to you guys in regards to what happened, but added that this was a revenge attack sought out by both defendants who ran a drug dealing enterprise. She went on to say, the Crown's case is that both of the defendants suspected Sean Mason of having stolen from them, and Stephen Milroy had allegedly told his sister that his Xbox money and cannabis had been stolen, which we've previously spoken about. The prosecution goes on to tell the jury that during the police investigation, investigation, they came across an 18 second trophy video of the attack taken by the pair and insisted that both of them played a part in the murder, either by inflicting violence or offering support, backup and encouragement by their presence. Again, she goes on to say that at around 1am on the 16th of May, Sean went to Stephen's flat to buy drugs, adding in that period that followed, it's clear Sean Mason was subjected to a catalogue of horrific acts that you will hear from evidence. Talking of the video, the prosecution says the recording, I'm afraid, is unpleasant to view. It lasts around 18 seconds and shows Sean Mason outside the property on his knees struggling to speak with a heavily blooded face. In the clip, it was heard that Wayne accused Sean of quote, taxing him before he's then struck again and collapses to the floor. Describing this part of the video, the prosecution said that Sean can be barely heard, but does say, Wayne, leave me alone. And then the sound of Sean being struck is heard followed by him collapsing backwards with his knees given in beneath him. After this, Wayne then says, quote, good night, God bless. That's all I've got to say to you, boy. Goodbye. It was heard at some point during this whole attack, Sean was put in a wheelie bin because some of his blood and teeth were found inside it. The prosecution said it's possible the wheels broke off when the bin was tipped and a sack barrow was used to move the bin. The continued evidence suggests he may have been taken out of the bin in the communal area and struck once again. Describing the moments when Sean's son Michael found his father, the prosecution said that he shouted for assistance. Stephen Milroy told police in interviews he heard Michael call out for help, but he shouted out the window, well, he shouldn't be a smackhead then, and offered no assistance. As you know though, Michael had managed to flag down police who were passing nearby. When they arrived at the scene, they noted that part of Sean's head had collapsed. And when the officer tried to do CPR, he realised Sean's chest cavity had also collapsed and wouldn't rise. Describing the attack in regards to his injuries, a pathologist said that the cause of death was due to facial and chest injuries, adding that he had multiple forceful blows to the face and head, including kicking and stamping 
and the use of a weapon. The pathologist said there were multiple lateral rib fractures, probably from stamping, and there was blood within the airway. Continuing, the catalogue of injuries is extensive. They include multiple bruises and abrasions to the head, a wound 5 centimetres long over the right temple, bruising over the ear, fracturing the cartilage and all across the face, bruising to both eyes, a hemorrhage in the right eye, on the chin and over the mouth, with a laceration to the mouth. A total of 18 separate injuries over the head and face. The injuries continue over the trunk and shoulder and chest and sternum, his flanks, his buttocks, on his arms, more bruises, abrasions, and the same over his left leg, a total of 40 external injuries. Internally, the soft tissues and bones reflected the treatment externally. There was heavy bruising found internally to the soft tissues and fractures across the face including the mandible, the eye sockets, the nose, across the arch. Internal bruising was found across the neck and the back and chest with accompanying multiple rib fractures. The arms and legs were also internally bruised though there was no bruises on Sean's knuckles and he also had bleeding around the brain and there was brain swelling. So as you can see, he sustained a brutal attack. The prosecution said that after they had committed this attack though, Stephen Milroy texted a woman who had also been accused of stealing off the pair and said, you're next. In regards to their arrests, the prosecution said both denied involvement in the attack, but Stephen did go on to say that he sold drugs for Wayne and claimed he had been robbed by people, which included Sean. He went on to explain to police he told Wayne that he had been robbed by these group of people, which again included Sean. He claimed he told Wayne to stop the attack, but did go on to admit helping him put Sean in the wheelie bin. Wayne gave a no reply interview throughout, but the prosecution said that Wayne would be expected to say that Stephen did in fact sell drugs for him, and he was asked by Stephen to carry out the attack as retribution for being robbed, but he only punched him in the head and face, which left him stunned, but still alive. So in court, Wayne would go on to say what the prosecution said he would say, and he told the court that Sean was all right when he left him after admitting using violence on him. He admitted throwing, quote, about five punches at Sean when he arrived at the flat, and it was here the video recording was taken. Wayne was heard saying, good night, God bless. That's all I've got to say to you, boy, goodbye. But he said the words meant, quote, that's it, I'll wash my hands with you get yourself away. After he threw the punches at Sean, he claimed that he was alright and was still standing on his feet. Wayne continued that Sean and Stephen started arguing after the punches had been given to Sean by Wayne, adding that he had enough of it and that was enough for him. He wanted nothing more to do with the whole situation. Wayne said Sean left the flat alive and he went about his business and claimed that at no time did he think that Sean was going to die. That's why he said he left after the initial punches were thrown and he went about his business. When Stephen gave evidence in court though, he blamed Wayne for attacking Sean and claimed he played no part in it. He said that when Sean turned up to the flat, Wayne answered the door and said there was no talking, Wayne just started. Describing what happened, Stephen said that Sean was dragged into the hallway and then the kitchen by Wayne, and Stephen said I went to the sitting room because I didn't want to watch what was happening, he was getting filled in by Wayne. He dragged him into the sitting room, he threw him on the floor next to the settee. He continued, Wayne was kicking him in the face and I said, how are you? that's enough man, and he said, I'll fucking tell you when it's enough. Steven said he tried to intervene, but it seemed the attack went on for a lifetime. As we previously explained, Steven did go on to admit helping Wayne by putting Sean into the wheelie bin, which was to take him outside. They'd done this because in their eyes, they needed to leave the flat as they thought that Sean would go on and tell police what had happened. When Steven was asked by his solicitor whether he thought Sean was dead, he said no, but he wasn't far away from it. When asked why he didn't help him, he said, I was scared I didn't know in case I got the blame for it. I'd seen someone get beat practically to death in front of my eyes. I was scared. Stephen had still stuck to his story about not getting involved in the attack itself and asked whether he wanted Sean to be killed. He said, not in a million years, no. As Sean was lying dead outside, though, it is believed that Stephen took his dog for a walk smoked cannabis, ate food, and was chilling out in his bedroom. After a trial at Newcastle Crown Court, Wayne would go on to be found guilty of murder, while Stephen would go on to be found guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Then, around 10 days ago, on the 22nd of December 2020, Wayne was sentenced to life with a minimum term of 24 years, 
while Stephen was handed a 19-year jail sentence. And so you can see today's story was very similar to the two that we previously mentioned at the start of the video. What I do find crazy about this story though is if we go back to the incident that happened in Sunderland where unfortunately the man was beaten to death, well that incident there only happened around two weeks after this one. So again, it is crazy to think that two men within the space of a couple of weeks, only down the road from each other, unfortunately died in the same way. But yeah, I do want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to Sean and my condolences do go out to his family at this current time. But let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. Give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill, street and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy Eat Pancho and I'm out.